So thank you guys for joining us today on another Pivot Me Live. Um, uh, we are still doing our standard podcasting platform, but um, as you guys know, we found that the delay between doing the podcast um, and getting that information out to you was a little too long. Um, things are so dynamic that we needed to get that information out to you quicker. Thus, Pivot Me Live. So we're um, having some real talk with real business owners um, and leaders throughout the world on how they're navigating this time, this very interesting season that we're all in, um, the opportunities they've identified. There's a lot of places where we can go and talk about what is what is wrong, what the struggle is, and that is very real and we don't want to minimize that. But we want this to be a place, we want this to be an environment where we can talk about what's still going right. Um, we have honest conversations about the challenges we're facing. And then we take it to, um, we move out of the, the problem phase and we move into the solution phase. Now, what are we going to do about it? Um, we want to make sure that we're focused on the things that we can control. There's a lot of things um, that are occurring right now that we can't have control over. Um, none of us can, but what we really want to focus our energy on, we want to focus our attention on are the things that are still in our control, the things in our business, the things in our life and our health that are still very much in control. If we're struggling with, with feeling overwhelmed, if we're struggling with the feeling of powerlessness, there are things that we can do every day to regain some of that feeling. Um, so this is, this is the place for that. So, um, we want to have real conversations. We want to have relevant conversations and timely conversations. If you've got questions, um, please either put them in the comments. There is a little bit of a delay in that, um, or send us a direct message and we'll reach out to you afterwards. All of these interviews are living on our, our pivot me page and that's pivot dash me.com backslash interviews. Uh, you can go and watch the, the other live videos, um, and we'll also push them out through the standard platforms, which now all that to be said, um, brings me to my guest today. Super excited to have Dana Doswell on. She's the co-founder of Sidebar Digital and the owner of Dazi Inc. We will put her links in um, both on the website and in um, our Facebook Live afterwards. Sidebar is a digital firm that provides strategic advice to business owners in the world's most stagnant industries, mortgages, finance, and legal services in order to help them use technology and branding to create better and more modern customer experiences. She also is at Dazi Inc. She helps Latin American-based businesses successfully enter North American markets by providing cultural training with a focus on sales marketing and networking in English. And I believe she's dialing in from Mexico right now. Dana, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. And you're right. I am in Mexico, pretty close to Cancun. So enjoying the sun here. Yeah. You actually have the warm weather that we're missing here in Reno, Nevada. Um, or maybe we'll have it today. I don't know. Maybe you're bringing in the good weather today. So Dana, tell us about what, what you do. So you're involved in a couple of different things. Tell us about what you're doing right now and, and who you're working with. And then we can kind of get into what you're doing at this exact moment in, in response to our situation. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So I guess I'll, I'll start with side parts. Uh, side part was founded about two and a half years ago. I have a business partner who's a data scientist and a software engineer. Fun fact, his name is Jonathan Snow. That's actually his name for people that watch Game of Thrones. Um, that's uh, always a conversation starter, which is funny. Yes. Yeah. Do you uh, often tell him that he knows nothing? You know nothing, Jon Snow? Literally all the time. It, okay. And he gets super annoyed about it. And it's just a thing. It's like a thing that we do now. <laughs> oh, I bet. The thing that everybody likes, but Jon Snow probably. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, so about two and a half years ago, he, he randomly got introduced to a mortgage broker on the East coast of Canada. Um, at the time he was building another piece of technology kind of in the data science space, um, really looking at better understanding social data and how to use it in marketing. Mm -hmm. So they, they kind of, you know, they started talking, realized that there's, there's a massive opportunity in a lot of these markets where they're super stagnant, they're really old. And there's, you know, that really, um, you know, what's the word I'm looking for that always, always done it this way, always going to do it this way kind of attitude and like mortgages are just notorious for that. And the more I've gotten in the industry, the more I believe that. So, um, they actually started working together on a full Salesforce implementation for this mortgage broker, which John did completely by himself, extremely successfully, which for anybody in the tech space, that's a really big feat. And um, so at the time I was doing sales for a tech startup in Toronto and John reached out to me and was like, hey, I think there's something here. We'd always kind of talked about working together. And uh, he was like, you know, let's see what we can kind of turn this into. So 
I actually took accounting and finance in school, um, hated it in the real world and completely switched careers, did tech sales. And then when John reached out to me, I was kind of like, okay, this feels like the next thing, um, you know, like the next thing that I really want to dig into. So what we realized is really, you know, it's the combination between the tech side. So everything from data science to software development to, you know, what password protection should you use if you're in a really regulated industry all the way to how do you actually brand yourself? How do you make mortgages interesting to the average human being? Cause they're really not interesting. And um, so that was kind of, you know, the initial thesis we had was there's something there. There's not a lot of people that are mortgage specific when it comes to, you know, like branding and digital strategy, you tend to think of that with the fun tech startup. So we, we started working with this broker on the, on the East coast and over the past two years, he's now been nominated and won top mortgage broker of the year in Canada for the past uh, two or three years, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, and we've been able to grow his business by over 90%. So wow. he's expanding into a second province, um, has a big team. And so that was kind of really where I got my start in the whole digital strategy branding side personally fell in love uh, mostly with the branding positioning side of things. I think that's kind of, you know, as we're seeing right now, like the companies that have a good story are the ones that are really, are really succeeding. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of the, the side part story. And the, you know, the way that I came to create Dawsey Inc. Uh, was because I started learning Spanish as a hobby about a year and a half ago. And um, I started doing language exchanges and, you know, literally just found the sketchiest website ever. It actually looked like it was from the 1950s. And I connected with a girl who's from a place called Mediva here in, in Mexico in the Yucatan province. And, uh, you know, she spoke four languages, engineering student, connecting with other people that were the director of artificial intelligence for banks in Chile. And I was kind of like, whoa, okay. Nobody ever talks about Latin America and Canada, but I was having all these conversations. So last year made the decision uh, to come to Latin America. I actually went to Argentina for two weeks moved to Mexico for almost three weeks last year, just to kind of, you know, like immerse myself in the culture and understand what opportunities there were here. And what I really realized is that there's so many startups as well as established businesses that want to come from Latin America and enter the North American market. But when it comes to, you know, like how to write a professional email or how to do a sales pitch in English or how to write a proposal, like all of, all of the different cultural nuances where in North America, it's so different, you know, like you, it's, it's just so different. I couldn't believe it. So yeah. it's kind of like the light bulb moment for me where I was like, okay, this is what I've been doing in North America, you know, even on the sales side and on the marketing side, I speak Spanish now and I love Latin culture. So that was really, you know, when I decided to start Dazi and help these Latin American companies uh, come into the North American market. Wow. So how, how is, how is what's going on right now affecting, affecting all that? I mean, is your team, you know, are you guys all remote? Are there people sitting in an office? How is it, how is it affecting you guys? Uh, so we've been completely remote from the beginning, which was a big, that was done very purposely, um, purposefully, sorry. That was something for me, like I just remember sitting in an office and I was like, nope, just, this isn't, this is not for me. Mm -hmm. So thankfully we've been remote from the beginning. And um, so in that sense, it hasn't affected us that much. And then the other thing that we're in a really fortunate position, specifically at side part that finance, law, and mortgages, they've all been deemed essential services. So they're kind of, you know, areas of the economy that are still going. That being said, how we're supporting our clients has drastically changed. So for one, you know, one example is a, a law firm we've been working with in Toronto. Um, they're called Access Law. They're actually really innovative specifically for being in law. And they were actually opening um, locations in Walmarts all across Ontario, so that people in any any region, no matter how you know how far away it was, they could have access to legal services. Then they started using technology, slowly trying to bring the process online. So obviously that you know got sped up to like okay, we're doing this two-year plan in kind of you know like one month now. Uh, so with them, you know, it really went from okay, we're no longer using technology to just you know um, make appointment setting easier. Like appointments are now online. Payment needs to be online. Secure document signatures need to be done online. They're also relying on lenders. They're relying on the client having, you know, having a place where they can print something. So in that end, it's really been, you know, our role has been mindset and just general, like, hey, do you need to talk and rant about the fact that your business is completely changing? And then on the other side, which is how are you communicating this to your employees? How are you communicating this externally? 
How are you communicating this to your partners? Because they partner with brokers, real estate agents, lenders. And then on the tech side, John has literally been a friggin' superhero in this situation and, you know, got them completely set up Zoom, Slack, created guidelines for employee usage, um, using secure password, completely redesigning the appointment software and actually implementing um, a new way for them to do and host appointments um, for doing things like virtual wills and powers of attorney. So that's kind of in a nutshell what's happening at side parts. Mm -hmm. We have been pretty much like not impacted in the way that we do business. And um, we did, we, we were working with some golf courses, which was kind of just, you know, like a symptom of as your name gets passed around. Mm -hmm. So those, those have fallen off, which is just inevitable in, in this situation. Sure. Uh, so the way we really responded to that was like, look, we're really lucky that we decided to focus on these industries. So we're just doubling down, you know, as, as much as possible to just say, okay, mortgages have never really changed. Now they're being forced to change and we actually know what to do in this situation. So mm -hmm. let's help the industry change and not even just our clients. Yeah, that's amazing. And so when you're, when you're talking about, so as far as the clients that you're, that, that you guys are working with, have you found that they are, um, at least the, 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 the law firm that you're just talking about, are you finding that their needs are far greater right now? And what, what do those needs look like? So to give context, some of the, some of the pivot me lives, people have said our clients need even more communication, like they're, I don't want to use the word needy, but their needs are greater, right? They need to know that, Hey, we're, we're sticking around like the company that you're representing is sticking around. And also we're going to continue to support this through the process. Like ship's okay. It's not going down and you and I are going to lock arms and we're getting through this together. Have you seen that with your clients as well? Yeah, I actually could not resonate with that anymore. Uh, you know, we, as you know, when you're kind of giving strategic advice, usually the first couple of months you work with somebody, obviously a little more intense, and then you figure out how to work with each other. What we found with most of our clients is there's been kind of like, you know, a once a month formal call, and then maybe another couple, like 10, 15 minutes touch base kind of things. Mm -hmm. So pretty much with every one of our clients, we're now doing a weekly 30 to 40 minute check-in during this time. Wow. We have instituted a policy that if they reach out to us by email, we respond within two hours during normal business hours. Um, so that's been something that's been really, really useful kind of on, on all ends because they just know when they're going to get a response. Um, some of the other things that we've done as well with our clients that have, I would say maybe a team of over 10 to 15 people is, uh, things that used to have to go through the boss, so to speak. We just kind of, from the beginning, we're like, in order to move quick enough, we're going to need you to like, let go of some decision-making power in these situations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I've now been working more in delegate mode and actually helping them figure out how to delegate, which yeah. I would say is probably like the number one role that we have right now is just what are you doing? Who's doing it for you? And where do you need to put your energy? So helping them with sort of project management to some extent, like an extension yeah. of the delegation yeah. of, Hey, this is the task that needs to be handled. Let's see who needs to handle it and how to move it on. Cause that, that's actually a conversation that we've been having a lot with our clients as well. So it's funny that you mentioned that because I haven't brought that up yet on these calls, which is that delegation. We really need delegation right now because for some people, their capacity has diminished greatly. So if they used to be able to knock out, say 10 things on their to-do list or the project list, um, they're now able to knock out six of them. And so those other four either need to be eliminated, delegated. They got to practice prioritization. They've got to use some productivity tools. And a big part of that is delegation. So is that something that you worked with your clients before on, or is that sort of a sign of the times? So we, we definitely did before, and that was actually something, uh, you know, like I didn't really realize I was a project manager until a year into running my company, mm -hmm. and that was both internally and on the client side, but um, I think what it, what's been interesting is going through all of this has actually made me feel more confident telling them what they need to delegate, and mm -hmm. just because I, like, I see it, you know, like I see everything they need to do from a completely different perspective. And, you know, the other thing that's also interesting, and I'm sure you see this too, working with small, medium sized businesses, you're working with other entrepreneurs. They are good at doing everything because they've had to do everything. Sure. That's a very different situation than working with a director of marketing for a multi million dollar company that's across 10 countries. So that, you know, being able to talk to them like on that entrepreneurial level has helped a lot during this time. And one thing I do have to say is our conversations have just become so frank and, you know, emails are pretty much like texting now. Like there's not really this like, hey, hope you're doing well. It's just like, 
this content was completed, it's going to be doing this by. And like that's the, the niceties are skipped, right? Exactly. <laughs> Let's just get to the meat. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. That's, that's a really good point. I hadn't, hadn't articulated that. Like I hadn't thought about that, but that's a hundred percent. Like, like emails have moved to more of a texting style. They're very candid. Like we cut out the beginning, like I'll go back to my emails and I'm like, I usually send my emails all the best or something like that. And that I've been skipping the all the best and I've been skipping like the niceties at the beginning. I let just go like John da, 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 da. and then I'm like, well, wait, go back in dear John. And <laughs> you're totally right. You're t- I love that. I love you. You mentioned a couple of things. I just want to reiterate one. You said you're doing a weekly check-in 30 to 45 minute check-in with almost everybody. That wasn't that was, that's a sign of the times. That's your response to this time. Um, responding to emails within two hours during work hours, man, that is, uh, that is really good advice. Um, and it, and it gave me pause too. Like, are we being as responsive because, you know, typically there's a chain and there's a way that it has to go. And, and sometimes there's bottlenecks within that, um, that process, but people want answers and people, it's not even answers. People want to know that you're there. Um, yeah. one of our earlier interviews, she said, make sure you're talking because everybody's listening right now. And, and I just think that's, that's a re- it's such a simple piece of advice, but responding to emails even faster than what's standard. Um, this is the time to do that. The other thing is helping people delegate, love that. Um, and talk to people on an entrepreneur level. You, you nailed that in the sense that, um, so I come from the big business world. So I used to, uh, I don't say used to, I still, um, but I primarily consulted big business. So hundreds of millions, if not billion dollar organizations and international business advisor, that's kind of what I do first and foremost. And then I moved more and more into medium-sized businesses and then work with some small businesses now. And so when I say small business, you know, say the one to 10, 15 million range, right? And when you're talking about that range, um, we'll, we'll just say zero to 15 million, you, you got someone who can wear a lot of hats and they always ask the question, can I do something? And the answer is yes, you can do something. Um, because that's likely the skill that got you here is your versatility and your ability to jump in and like, Oh, well, I'll clean the floors and I'll balance the PNL. Like they can do it all. Right. And the problem is, is they, they have to reframe that once they get to a certain size of, should I do this? before yeah. you jump in, Cause yes, you can, cause you're resourceful and that's what got you here. But now you have to pause and say, should I do this? And is this making mm-hmm. sense for you? And I love that you found that that's a lot of the conversations you're having is the entrepreneur to entrepreneur conversations. One thing that I think we're really going to get out of this is kind of a, a sidebar conversation, but we're, we're connecting on a very human level. And to your point, a very entrepreneur level, like I'm a business owner, you're a business owner. Like I see you, I see your struggle. We're in it too. And the connections, I think they're running so deep now. So I, I, the, the connections we're going to feel with our partners, with our clients, even with our staff, I feel like they're really being like forged right now and they're being cemented. Um, and that's really going to serve us going forward. Yeah. There's, there's two things you said. And, you know, so right now, like the, the role of every single CEO or executive level person in any company needs to be PR and vision a hundred percent. They need to leave. They need to trust their operators at the end of the day that that is the role that CEO, CFO, CMO, they need to be out there showing their employees and showing the public, here's what we're doing. Here's why we're doing it. And that is the biggest key right now. If you do not have a sentence in your organization that says, we believe in this and it's a better future for some type of industry or person, you need to go back. You need to create that right now because otherwise people will not want to do business to you with you. And that brings me to my second point, which is people right now are only doing business with people that do business ethically. Ethical business has never been more important. And the way that you show that you're doing business ethically is good PR and it's good marketing because Mm. people, people are scared. And like you said, the connection, the connection is running deep. So this is also an opportunity that if you have a strong why you're doing business ethically And you're able to message and, you know, or put that message out into the world in a way that makes sense to people that could buy from you. The fact that you're forging a business relationship in this environment, Mm -hmm. I really strongly believe like that's not, that's not just a normal business relationship. This is like, you are helping me get through a crisis. Yeah. That's crisis management. Yeah. Gosh, that is so profound. I love, and and I want to just clarify one point, Dana, you're, you're dead on. And when you said the phrase, um, actually both your points were great. I'm like, I don't even know which one to speak to. Um, so you said show you're doing business ethically. And I really want to highlight the word show because some people will think 
well, but I am doing business ethically. It doesn't matter what you are or are not doing because you can have the cure for cancer in your garage. If nobody knows you have the cure for cancer, it doesn't do anybody any good. So that's why show is so important. So it's not just about what we're doing. And sometimes people can feel like, oh, well, well, you know, small business owners, l- larger businesses get that and they understand PR and marketing and how important that is. But sometimes smaller business owners like, well, you just do the right thing. I don't need to sing it from the mountaintops. Oh yes, you do. Cause nobody knows that you're doing the right thing. And people are vetting you according to you doing the right thing. People are vetting you. You know, I was talking to a, a business owner that was saying, well, I'll, I'm doing everything to keep my staff employed. I've remortgaged my house to what well, he's going through the process to remortgage his house. That needs to be communicated. I mean, not in exo- those exact words, but the, the lengths at which that business owner is laying it on the line to keep his staff of the small business um, employed so that they can put food on their table. Or one of my other guys runs a construction business and, you know, his, some of his, his, um, staff that tends to earn lower wages were concerned about, am I going to continue to put food on the table, him going and buying them groceries and leaving them on the front door. Like it doesn't necessarily need to be a picture of the groceries, but we need to communicate or can, but we need to be communicating the way that we're showing up for our staff and for our clients, because, that matters to people more now more than ever. And it's not just about blowing your own horn. And again, I'm speaking to the small business owners. When I say this, it's about communicating what's important to you. It's about Mm -hmm. communicating your values. Don't, uh, if you frame it as that, because people want to do business with people that they agree with their values, they agree with the way you're treating people. And if you're not treating people well, you know, this is the time where we're going to get, we're going to see some cuts made in that regard. We are going to notice when you go to a, a, a restaurant and they're supporting their people by providing them with masks or providing them with, you need extended leave because you have kids at home. I get that. Like those people are going to stand head and shoulders over the people that are maybe not having the same ethical practices towards their staff or to their, their clients at this time. So I love that you said show. And I also love that you said, Hey, C-suite, you know, the executives, the, 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 you know, executive leadership that are leading these organizations, this is your time for managing PR and, and, and communicating vision and trust your operators, because it's very easy for people in those roles to want to pop into operator role, right? Like to get down in the weeds and go, well, are we doing this? And we're we doing that. And it's such a good, good message. Trust your operators. If you put the right, right butts in the right seats, just let them do their job and, and, and stay focused on you doing your job. And actually, it reminds me, I was listening to a, a Gary Vaynerchuk podcast the other day, love him. And he said that if you have the right operators in place, everything else is good intention and massive efforts. And I was like, that so perfectly sums up how to run a business, <laughs> literally how to run a business, but the right operators in place and everything else is the right intention and massive effort. Mm, that's good. I like it. One other thing too, and I can give like a very, a very tangible example of, um, you know, something I shared that got a really good response. So one of the things that we did for one client was we created a work from home guide. I'm super big on mindset and mental health. So mm-hmm. one of the things I put in there without, without being asked was three different morning routines at different lengths. One was 10 minutes, one was 20 minutes, and one was 45 minutes, literally linked to different level yoga videos. If people want to try that link to meditation resources, I screenshotted in like a Google document. It's not pretty at all. Google document. It didn't have any other client information on it. And I posted it on LinkedIn. And I said, here's something, you know, I made for one of our clients to help their employees manage going from an office to an at-home environment. And that just blew up. Like people were asking me to send it to them, you know, like, so they could like link to the yoga videos. And that's something that just shows, you know, again, like my value is I'm not just thinking about making sure your computer is set up properly, which is important, but can you even show up and sit at your computer and feel like you can do a good job? Mm -hmm. No, that's a really good point. Is that, um, and again, we're kind of getting into the, the, the mechanics a little bit, but is that your primary social media platform, LinkedIn? Is that yeah, usually where you for, live? For okay. me, for me, LinkedIn, I kind of live there. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Oh, that's, that's good. Um, that's one of the things we were, what's been kind of emerging is people are having far more presence on their social platforms. Um, and they always have the preferred one because that's where most of our audience live and where we can add the most value. I assumed yours was LinkedIn, but, um, now, now we know for sure. So, so Dana, it sounds like you're adding tremendous value to, um, to your clients, what hurdles are you guys facing? I mean, other than maybe, you know, we're needing to engage on a much more like high touch level, but what are some of the hurdles you're facing and, and what are you doing to navigate them? 
Love this question. So number one, I'll start with internally. Um, so in the last year, I have spent a lot of money and time developing my own mindset. So I feel like I've been able to maintain a pretty, pretty good like baseline. I'm really focusing on being positive. The thing that I didn't really expect was, you know, in the past week, I've had five people close to me that have lost their jobs. Mm -hmm. I had somebody that was mentoring me, lost his job. And so for me, like it, part of what I'm struggling with right now is like, how do I support others? And so John, my business partner and I, like, it's been amazing to have a business partner throughout this. And just, you know, every time we start a conversation, it's just, how you doing? You know, do you need to talk? I'm literally alone in Mexico. I haven't talked to another human being in person in 10 days. Like that, again, did not, you know, did not expect that. So that's kind of on the personal side. And I think that's just kind of take it, take, take it day by day. I have, I'm super obsessed with habit building and that's been really my rock and foundation through all of this. Um, and then on the other side is that our business model has completely changed because people are not signing a contract for 12 months to pay you thousands of dollars a month right now. Like that's just not happening. Um, you know, unless you're providing masks for a hospital, but if you're saying like, Hey, like we're selling strategic advice, like there is, that's just not the right way to approach this market right now. And that has always been our business model is mm -hmm. very kind of traditional agency. Like you come in, analyze what's happening. You make your, you know, curated set of recommendations put together a 12 month plan of how you can help them. They sign on the dotted line. You have an initial payment, you have monthly payments. That's just, you know, nobody knows what's going to happen. So they're just not in that mindset. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is, okay, now by, by taking all of our clients virtual in the past three weeks, plus being on the communication side, what are really like the main tenants that we learned from this? And it's not going to be perfect. Like, I don't think anything ever is, but what we're going to be launching in a couple of weeks we still actually have to name it, but it's going to be a, like almost like a mastermind boot camp. So one month where we've created, you know, a set of content that goes through three phases that focuses on the software and technology that you need to one, have to be operationally virtual. And then second is to be able to sustain that over a long period of time. And then the mm -hmm. second two phases are focused on adapting your messaging. So going back to that, why, if you haven't already, or even just creating your right messaging for the first time. And then lastly is helping you create a system where you can sustainably produce a high volume of content because mm. that content is the biggest marketing asset you have right now. So the way we've completely changed this is, you know, price point is going to be under a thousand dollars. You're going to go through this program as a cohort. So each week, the new phase is going to be released. You're going to have exercises you do. And then the following week, we're going to do a live Q and a session with everybody coming in and being able to ask these questions. We're going to have a Facebook group and a WhatsApp group that are going to support these business owners going through this process. So now it's a one month commitment. It's running from May 15th to June 15th. Mm -hmm. It's under a thousand dollars and you really get that community aspect, which we really believe was super important during this time in the Facebook, well, I guess, zoom to zoom, um, you know, like meeting environment with John and myself. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. And it, it's so timely. I mean, it's, um, and I'm sure to create this on a short notice, again, we've taken projects that are maybe, you know, 12 month, 18 month projects, and they've gotten all in a pressure cooker, right? Like now they're like, well, we have to launch this within 60 days. And we've seen a whole lot of that, um, which is so important. Um, the value that you'll add in that plus, you know, the community and accountability is huge. So, um, you and I haven't spoken about this, um, much, but, um, I run masterminds for business owners with a different focus. And what I will tell you, Dana, is we need that now more than ever. Um, you know, at first you kind of evaluate and go, okay, is this the right time? The answer is yes, this is the right time. This is the right time to provide insight and community and accountability to people that are either trying to learn a new skill or actively seeking the next level of success. This is that time. So I'm so glad to hear um, that you that you you guys are developing this. That this is uh, it sounds like it's about to launch, um, and it sounds like it's going to add tremendous value in a time where where people are are needing this. This is exactly what people are needing. And um, you know, talking about the ways that you're pivoting your business. You know, we've talked about this a little bit on. Um, well, we've talked about different versions of pivoting our business, but 
it's so important to see that, Hey, this was maybe a revenue stream before, maybe before it was, you would go and sit down with people and do these, you know, strategic planning workshops or, you know, for us in our business, there's a lot of getting on a plane and going and seeing the whites of someone's eyes and like, all right, well, we're going to do this and we're going to do strategic planning, or we're going to re revamp your go-to-market strategy. No one's getting on a plane right now. So it's so important to not think about what we used to do and how we wish we could still do it the same way because business has changed. And so what you've just highlighted is a great example that you're like, all right, well, some things about my business has changed. Um, how am I going to bring in additional revenue stream? How am I going to add more value to my clients? How am I going to shift right now? How am I going to pivot right now so that I'm still being so, so relevant and people people need what we've got. So how do I communicate that? To, how do I give it to them in a way that's really going to serve them? Um, yeah. Glad you shared that with us. You're going to have to give us more information and give us links and things yeah. so um, people can go check it out. Hopefully I have a name soon. I'm really bad at naming things. Like that's one thing. I'm just, I don't know why I cannot do it for the life of me. Like, I think I have this genius idea and I say it out loud. I'm like, that's like, nobody would want that. So I am trying to talk to some of my other friends that are like creative in a different way and be like, please help me. <laughs> yeah. Can't. Work on the naming. It's always a turn. Yeah. And then people fall in love with the name and it's, there's a good chance it's taken too. So you definitely want to, um, we actually did some, some, um, podcasting on trademarking. Cause we actually ran into it on oh. the, on the, on the pivot me podcast. So we used to be called the spark. Um, and until the day that we got a cease and desist letter. Um, so we share, we openly shared that process. Like, yeah, you know what the trademarking thing, even if the podcast, you might want to take a look at that. Um, mm -hmm. you I have the best idea, but, um, we want to make sure that it's not also the name of someone else's idea. Um, and, uh, but so as far as when you're showing up for your clients right now, so you're giving them additional resources, you're investing in them more, you're responding to their emails more. Um, and then you're providing information on LinkedIn about, Hey, this is our morning routine, or here's some really good habits that are going through this. Like how intentional are you on how you're showing up right now? Like the, the impact that you're having on your clients or the team, is that something that you've got um, in the forefront of your mind when you're going into these discussions? 100%. And that's something, um, you know, like even, even with people that work with us, like even freelancers, um, we've also obviously had more, more communication with them. And mm -hmm. one thing that I also believe, obviously mental health is really important. And that's, you know, a pretty obvious statement at this point in time, but mm -hmm. literally I actually made a video on this of how memories are created and how you impact um, a memory of someone else and how it's created in their mind. And my question in the video was like, are you creating good memories for other people right now? And, mm -hmm. and also for your future self, because you are literally who you are right now is a collection of your memories based on behaviors you've done in the past. Mm -hmm. So if you, and that's why, you know, when this whole thing started for two weeks straight, I posted a video every single day about something I was grateful for. Literally like one day it was a mango that I ate. Like Mexico has beautiful mangoes. You cannot get that in Canada. And for me, I actually like took a step back and I was like, no, this is like, this is what this is all about is finding little things that I'm grateful for and sharing it so that somebody else is like, it's not weird to be like grateful for eating good food. That's yeah. actually amazing. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm being as intentional as possible. And I have a really amazing uh, Monday night group. It's we're called like the business breakthrough. We went through kind of a mastermind together. A couple of us have stayed talking mm -hmm. and every Monday we're talking about how can we show up better right now? What do we need to learn? And a big part of what we've been talking about is the morning routine, mm -hmm. because making sure that you are okay and that you have that, like, you know, I can do this. Like I'm, I'm going to go in my day and I'm going to kill it. Mm -hmm. Now that's what you're bringing into other people's lives. Like I come to a client call. I'm like, listen, there's so much opportunity right now. Like other people are contracting push, like get yourself out there. You are valuable. You have information. We're talking about mortgages, which is people's livelihood. This is the biggest investment they, they make. People are stressed out. So we're launching, you know, like new, you know, like a new monthly email for one of our clients that we plan on turning into a podcast in the future. And, you know, like those are things that before he was a little hesitant about and now, and I just push now and I'm like, you know, this is the time, like build massive momentum through this because you are gaining so much trust right now by being the voice, by being vulnerable, by putting yourself out there in being the in-between person between your client that's freaked out and the big government entities that are releasing all of this like COVID relief information that has a bunch of finance jargon in it. Mm -hmm. 
which is hard to get through. I love the line. Um, other people are contracting push because we we've actually been talking about that a lot, that in this season, there will be a lot of people that step down and this is our time to step up. Like there is a leadership gap. So leaders have to step forth. Um, and again, that can be leading in your community that can be leading in your family, or it can be leading in your business, but there is a gap and we've got to decide to fill it. There are people that are going to wait and see, um, and, and they're going to get the things that are, that remain after people that are pushing and hustling. And it's just, and not to say that we don't need to create space for us to, you know, process what's going on. And, and, and we absolutely need that. We were talking yesterday with, um, uh, with our guest, um, Monica Lee, that we were saying, Hey, if you need to get in bed and pull the covers over your head, like you, you do that if that's what you need at that moment. But then afterwards you got to get back up and you got to like get back in the ring because that's not going to serve your business right now. Um, and I, and I get it. It's, it's, it's a challenging time. Um, but we've got to keep showing up. We've got to keep moving ahead. And it, it's, it's also our responsibility because as business owners, there are people that depend on us, not only clients, but staff. And, um, we don't get to, to stop. We don't, we just have to keep moving ahead. Um, the, uh, the frozen frozen two, I don't know. Cause you know, I don't know that you've seen frozen two Dana, but I'm just going to keep going with it. There's a song in there. It's a little snowman sings it. Um, I used this phrase before, but he kind of like put it in the forefront of our mind, which is take the right, take the next right step. Right. Yes. And we've been saying that a lot because when we try to get too far ahead, it can get a little, it can get a little murky because a lot of things are changing really quick, but just focus on take the next right step, like progress over perfection. Just keep moving, yeah. keep moving. Um, if you take a step and you're like, well, that didn't work. That's okay like move, pivot, change, yeah. but just keep taking steps. Don't just sit and wait right now because it won't serve you. And fulfillment is felt in progress. Like we have to be progressing to something. So we're happy. And, 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 you know, I mentioned yesterday, I don't want to wait that long to be happy. I, you know, we shouldn't, we've got to find it in today's moment. Um, and just keep taking steps forward. Yeah. And one of the things that you just kind of reminded me of is I think Right now, like people don't need consultants, they need coaches. And that's really how I've kind of changed my mindset a little bit is going from being just a strategic partner to like, you mentioned the word, word accountability before. Even before all of this started, I realized that like at the end of the day, nine times out of 10, people just need accountability mm-hmm. and they will pay you to be their accountability person because mm-hmm. there are not, like it makes you uncomfortable sometimes. I know I've been uncomfortable, you know, being with the client. I'm like, okay, they're my client. And I've always been brought up that, you know, you like please them, you know, like in, I worked retail, I was a waitress, like everything is like the customer's right, but yeah. that's not always true. And especially in this type of environment, doesn't serve them. No, exactly. Being the coach and, you know, also being somebody where like, you know, we've had some pretty vulnerable conversations with our clients recently, where it was supposed to be a call talking about the next thing we're launching. And instead it was like, okay, I'm concerned about my parents during this time. My parents are, are, are older and that was the conversation. And you just have to be able to really coach and assess like, okay, this mm-hmm. is what they need to talk about. And they're feeling like this will help them get to the point where they can work. Yeah. And, and to your point, if, if someone enters a conversation and you're supposed to talk about a, a product launch they're doing in 60 days and all they have on their mind is I'm worried because my mom's been coughing a lot on the phone they're not going to be, their head's not in it. Like, yeah. so the, w- the way you can serve them and even how, the way that you can serve that product launch is by meeting them where they are and, and having that conversation and just giving, uh, one thing that we need is a whole lot of compassion, a whole lot of empathy and a whole lot of patience in this season, because we don't know what it costs to be that person today. Like your client, Bob, that you've been working with for three years and you, you know, Bob and you, this and that, well, Bob, Bob might be dealing with some pretty serious stuff. Bob might struggle with anxiety or depression or have a family member close to him that does, or, or someone is ill. And the, the cost to be someone is really high and, and we don't, we don't know what that is. And so just meeting them where they are and understanding that they're going to process it differently. But, um, you know, one of the things that have come up earlier was actually asking people how they are and not, and not just how they are like be specific. And that's come up with a lot of the business owners where they'll ask um, their clients or their staff questions. Like, like, how's your wife? How's the kids handling this? Like, is everybody okay? Which is a very different question than, Hey, how are you? Because that's, that's drive by leadership. We talk about Chris Hogan always says, don't do drive by leadership. Right. Um, People are, we're, we've been conditioned to just get, Oh, okay. Or, you know, kind of give some real superficial answer. But when you ask very direct questions, like, 
do you need to talk? Like, let's, let, let's just start there. We'll, we'll get into the business here. I, I had a strategy call this morning at 6 30 AM. Um, the first 30 minutes was around this. It wasn't strategy. Even though I came with goals, we came with an objective. We're both very professional and yet she's in Detroit, Michigan right now, which is a pretty hard hit area. And she's been impacted both she's been impacted, uh, dramatically by what's going on. Um, and as has our family. So the conversation was 30 minutes around that, because I think we needed to clear that before we can move into, okay, let's get strategy. Okay. Now, now let's tackle what we're, what we're here to do, which, um, from a mechanic standpoint, managing standpoint, your meetings might run a little longer right now. Your conversations are running a little longer. You're finding that as well. A hundred percent. And I actually, it's funny you mentioned that because this morning, uh, you know, I sat down and I was like, okay, next week I'm actually scheduling time to work in my calendar because I, I wasn't, I didn't have, the, you know, like isn't enough, um, like me day and a time to just sit down, you know, like two, two hour block of time to like get sh- sh- done. I don't know if I can swear on this. Yeah, um, you can now. Okay. There you go. Uh, we, we, we're now rocking the E for explicit. So we're good. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Woo! yeah. We just popped our collar. We're, t- yeah, we're cool now. Yeah, I like that. Um, yeah, I literally was saying that to myself because I was like, and I'm the kind of person too, when I feel somebody needs to talk, like I don't even care about like, oh, I'm supposed to get this done by the end of the day. Like I'll magically figure out how to do that. And yeah. I'm just like, yeah, like whatever. So, and, and because of that now I'm like, okay, I'm going to just be a little bit more like mindful with how I'm making my, my schedule and like my calendar next week mm-hmm. because I also need to make sure I can get the work done to support the people. (laughs) Yes, that's so true. I think that we've got to build in those buffers. Again, just there's the, okay, we're talking about it in an abstract and then we bring it down to, and what does that mean today? That means your meetings might take a little longer. That means when you reach out to your staff, you need to build in that buffer that something, something may have changed and they may need to talk about it. You may, you know, I was on a call yesterday morning where, you know, we thought it was going in one direction and one of the gals that dialed in, um, has is is ill and has a very real concern that she might um she might be ill with um with COVID-19 the the topic of the conversation changed completely and that's okay it's supposed to because ultimately we're doing business with humans we're humans and if we can connect on that level I want I we got to serve people exactly how they need to be served right now and that looks a lot different than it did two months ago and that's okay but if we try too hard to make things look like they did before. Um, it may not serve them and it may not serve them. We've got to give them some space to be like, Hey, how are you doing? Let's talk about this. And then, you know, for us internally, what we always follow it up with, how do I best help right now? Like, what does that look like to you? And just, and sometimes people just say, just asking me what you just asked, just, just having a safe place where I get to say stuff's hard right now, or I've been sick since yesterday and it scares me, you know, just giving people space to show up and just be human is, is so important right now, even in business, especially in business, because a lot of people feel like they have to wear their armor and, and you know, yeah. that's the case, right? That was the case until about two months ago and things have changed and it's okay to like lay your armor down and say, let's, let's have a real conversation. We'll put the armor back on. Like we're going to do business. We're going to get through this, but, but I'm locked arms with you and we're getting through this together. Yeah. That's, Something I think that I have kind of an, uh, now a unique perspective of is I've done business in some of, you know, like, like finance mortgages, I've sold into companies like uh, McDonald's, Marriott, like I've experienced that cutthroat, like, you know, your company is a line item on our budget, mm-hmm. but in Latin America, like the culture here is so different. And this is, I guess, shifting gears a little bit, you know, side part doesn't have Latin American clients, but Dolly does, but here, you know, like one of the, well, actually, this is funny one of the first people I talked to wanted me to fly to a different country in Latin America to meet them. And this was just literally first time meeting them. We don't even know if we're going to do business together, but that is very customary here because of just because of the culture and there's been a lot more like scamming and that kind of stuff here. So people need to see you face to face to know, like, I'm going to do business with you. If I give you my money, you're not going to just leave. Um, But through, you know, even before all of this, like, every, every person here is so caring and like, they genuinely care about each other. Mm -hmm. I had to rent an Airbnb last minute. You know, the lady here literally, uh, wants to bring me to a park. She cooked homemade food yesterday. I left it outside my door. Mm -hmm. Her daughter made pancakes and, you know, like made an extra one for me. 
like, that, that doesn't happen in Airbnb in Canada or in the US. Like that just doesn't happen. Um, and you know, like my back got hurt when I was here. My friend's mom literally messages me. She goes like, okay, I have a doctor on the line. I have a chiropractor and I have an acupuncturist. Let me know when you're available. I'm gonna make the appointment for you and I'll drive you there when you need it. And I, all I told her was that my back hurt. And wow. it's like, that is like, that is so ingrained in the culture here. People so genuinely, like it is like a human first culture. Yeah. And so like, that has been really amazing to see, you know, like even the startups in Latin America, one of them, um, they are, I think they're Colombian based and they're an e-learning platform. Mm-hmm. And they just really made their platform completely free to the entire world for any teacher for the rest of the year. Wow. That's amazing. That, yeah. So I feel, I feel really fortunate that I'm actually like in this part of the world right now. How that, that does bring me to what sort of the basic question of how are you getting food right now, Dana? Like, what does that look, how, what do groceries look like for you? Um, okay. So number one, Uber Eats is my best friend right now. Okay. Uh, so there's Uber Eats in the town that you're in. Yeah, Great. But there's actually, so there's a company here. I don't know if you've heard, it's called Rappi. Have you heard of it? Mm-mm. Okay. So it's the, it's a Colombian founded company. It's a massive like unicorn startup in Latin America. Wow. It is a common, so now I want to bring Rappi to North America because Rappi, you can order, you can order things from a mall. You can get cash delivered to your house. You can order from more restaurants um, compared to Uber Eats. You can also order groceries. You can order from um, furniture stores. It's literally like every wow. every app we've created in North America, but in one for getting things delivered to your house. Yeah. Uh, so that's, and there's like a chat thing. So when they're grocery shopping for you, same thing with like Instacart or whatever, like they'll send you pictures if you're getting whatever. Um, and then for me, I'm really lucky. There's a little, it's called like a fruteria in Spanish. So it's mm-hmm. like, like a little fruit market. Um, it's from like a local farm here and it's around the corner from me. So that's where I've been buying like fresh produce and then just taking, I think the same precautions everybody is like, um, washing things before you bring them into your house and, and, and whatnot. So wow. that's how I'm surviving. <laughs> yeah. Not a bad life, honestly. <laughs> Were you planning on sitting out the pandemic in this town or is that, was that a change too? That was a change. I actually had a flight. So right where I am right now, I, was, I came to visit some friends and I had a plan. I was moving to Mexico city. I was going to be in the hub of entrepreneurship. Um, you know, they're big in FinTech, like Mexico, Mexico is the first uh, Latin American country to create a FinTech law. Mm-hmm. And so I had this plan, literally had an Airbnb. I was going to live in for two months and find another place. And mm-hmm. then so got here and then I, I'd been here for about seven days and then COVID just like hit. Wow. And yeah. I'm like, I'm not moving to a city of 22 million people right now. Just probably not a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just, I just saw a friend who just dialed in and is watching Jorge, which um, I don't know if he's still in Mexico, but I know that he was visiting when it was happening. And I was like, I feel like he's going to have to sit this one out. So Jorge, I, I don't know if you're still there. I think he was in Mexico city. Um, so I think he... <laughs> He's, he, he's going to have to sit this one out. I don't know that he made it back. Um, he oh my gosh. usually lives in Reno, Nevada, but he's, he has a lot of family there. Um, so it, it's been kind of interesting to see where people e- ended up and are kind of sheltering in place and, um, and sharing their experiences is, is amazing. Cause you, you yeah. wonder, um, what is this like being experienced when you're not in your hometown and you're not near, you know, all your people, I can imagine that's some, that's some challenges. And the, the other thing I would say too that, and I know a big part of this is about the opportunities. And I believe literally like with everything in my being, there are so many opportunities right now. And mm-hmm. on a personal level, like there are going to be people that come out of this mentally stronger, fitter, like everything, like they're going to be better. And like that, that's what I'm doing. Like that mm-hmm. is literally what I'm dedicating myself to. And then on the business side, you know, the way that we do business, one has completely changed. Like e-commerce is obviously going through a rapid transformation. Sure. And then the other side of it is companies specifically in North America have been using India for IT outsourcing and mm-hmm. have been doing supply chain in, in China. Some of them do have operations diversified in Latin America, but with all this happening, Latin America and specifically Mexico is so well positioned to, for business continuity planning because we are physically on the same land mass. Time zones are almost identical. Level of English is often a lot better. Mm -hmm. Um, And they are still very advanced with all of like their technology. Like some of the startups I see here are crazy. So I think for, you know, any North American company listening to this, if you're going through digital transformation and you need somebody to do like software development, hire a Colombian company. 
Columbia has a ton of amazing like mm. IT development firms that are like Ernst & Young partners, KPMG partners, um, and their level of service is amazing. I've seen their work and they just, the way they do business is mm -hmm. amazing and they're doing ethical business. Um, so I think that's, you know, nearshoring is a huge opportunity right now. Um, yeah. I guess on both sides of the border, so to speak. Um, and then the supply chain as well is if you've been, if you're selling products on Amazon and you've been using a, a Chinese supplier and manufacturer and they're not answering you or your products haven't been delivered for a month now, mm -hmm. um, make a change, you know, like yeah. use this, use this to make a change, be mm -hmm. smart, be logical, go with, go with a place that is geographically closer to where your customers are is in the same time zone and somebody that you can, you know, like really, really communicate with and understand if you need to make changes to your product or something like that. It's a good reminder because we work with a couple of um, um, three different manufacturers that manufacture out of China and uh, we work with much more than that, but I'll, I'll say three primary ones that are manufacturing out of China and have run into obviously huge hurdles um, since January. Like they, they definitely ran into the hurdles and were sort of a, um, some, uh, what's the word? Is it harbinger? Mm. Anyways, um, a sign that things were about to get rough. Um, I'm pretty sure that's Harbinger. It's been a while since high school English, but so, yeah. um, I'm yeah. pretty sure that's it. But they, they definitely were like, Hey, our manufacturing has completely shut down. And this was, I think it was the beginning of January. Um, they've needed to get really, really creative. And so one of the, one of the things we've been talking about here is this is the time to diversify, um, eggs basket. I get it. We've been there where, <laughs> Hey, this is working. What we're doing is working and it's a really good price points. And Hey, we're filling up a container and it gets shipped over and we know when it's coming and we know when it clears customs. And, um, but sometimes knowing doing what we know, um, doesn't always serve us. And sometimes it's like, all right, this, this is a great time to diversify. This is a great time to find other suppliers. And um, that really dovetails well in what you're saying. Like well, maybe if you are, you know, for the companies that are out of North America, maybe this is the time to say, okay, let's look at a partner that's a little bit closer. Let's look at a partner. Um, and not to say, hey, don't do business with with the, your original suppliers, but maybe it's time to diversify. Maybe it's time to say, okay, well, we're going to do some manufacturing here and some manufacturing there. We're going to um, pick up some services um, in our original location. We're going to pick up some services in Colombia or, or someplace, um, that also might be able to provide a great level of service, great products, um, have the conversations, have, look into it now, um, because it will, it will serve us having contingency plans and our contingency plans might become primary plans. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. What other opportunities are you seeing um, out there? So um, you, you've highlighted some great opportunities, um, whether that's for your business or for other people's business, what opportunities exist? Okay, so maybe I'll break this down um, between, I guess what I've been seeing with side part, cause that's very like, we're obviously very ingrained in kind of like the regulated industries in, in North America. And then I'll break it down to Latin America. So in North America, specifically within um, kind of like finance law, and I think any any real service based business that has really um, grown off of what I call like that old school mentality, like going to golf clubs, like you know face to face, like this is really how we've been growing our business, even for companies that have a product. So number one is you you have to create a way to make an additional source of revenue that fully comes from online. You mm. you no longer can have only one source of revenue that is based off of physical operations because I can guarantee that even if you were able to move it to online right now, it is not operating at the same capacity and you are not making as much money as you were before. Now, how do you do that? Okay, so number one is look for partners in other industries that you have never, ever, ever thought of before. So I'm gonna use law firm as an example again, is let's say um, you know universities are still gonna be operating. They have, a, you know, they can pretty easily go online. So how can you as a law firm tap into the, thousands and thousands of law students that graduate without a job and are looking for an immersive experience. Can you create a virtual law training simulation based off of real cases that you're actually getting mm -hmm. and get, you know, like, I'm not gonna call it like free legal advice, but like a team of people who have gone from law school to be helping you as kind of like an outsourcing, an outsourcing team while, while they're actually getting, you know, real time valuable experience. And this is completely online. Like that literally doesn't exist right now. So now you need to find a partner, which is somebody who is used to creating immersive online digital experiences, potentially even in the entertainment field where they can use gamification to help engage these law students. Like that's just like not literally never been done before. Mm -hmm. That's kind of one idea. 
and you can apply that to like literally any industry. Are you doing, are you somebody that, you know, has been creating products? Is there a service that you can now create with a product that you can sell, you know, that you can sell online? Can you create a community that's never been created before, you know, that supports a service or an interest or something like that? Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of like number one is just immersive digital experiences, like literally be, get interested about virtual reality, augmented reality, like those industries are now blowing up. Mm -hmm. um, similar with e-commerce, uh, we actually did some work for a company that was creating a, a hologram. So you could actually look at a piece of clothing on your phone and then you could like create a hologram in a 3D environment in your room mm -hmm. to see what it actually, what, what that jacket looks like on a human being, including like, here's how tall this girl is, like, here's how much she weighs. So like, you're like, okay, yeah, you know, like, probably don't look like a model, but I kind of have an idea of like what mm -hmm. this will look like. Um, so that's kind of a couple examples on that side. And then um, in Latin America, I think that, well, number one is definitely like the nearshoring for any um, service-based service, service -based projects, primarily mm -hmm. in the IT environment and then research environment, mm -hmm. um, I think is really, really big. And then the other thing is uh, in, the, in the health space. So there's actually one startup called Lutters. Uh, they're based in Mexico. They, they were created to help combat COVID. And they are actually a mobile, um, what's sort of like when you go to get blood taken. Oh yeah. Uh, so they like created, a, a, um, what is that called? That's like a, it's donation, but like, um, donation? Blood donation? United blood services is what we call it locally. And you can do either okay. like whole blood, red blood, plasma donation, like, gotcha. like blood donation, I guess, which is yeah. funny. Cause when I was in university, that's the job that I had when I was like 18, oh, really? 19. Um, but I can't seem to remember what it's called. Like, yeah, I guess just donation. We're going to go with yeah, donation. Yeah. yeah. So they created a, like a startup where it's incorporating technology and a physical product where they're actually going around to get blood donation because that problem hasn't gone away with COVID, but people can no longer leave their homes to go to the hospital to do this. Mm, um, such a good point. Yeah. And same thing where there's some people, especially like older generations where, you know, if they need to be tested or they have other pre-existing health conditions mm -hmm. they might not be comfortable doing a completely virtual zoom health assessment so again maybe they can book something online and then somebody actually comes to their house while taking all of the precautions necessary to still see and assess this person in person which is what yeah. another startup in latin america is doing mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, i'll add to that the blood donation the mobile blood donation unit love the idea um where that could become really really needed right now is if they find that the antibodies are present in people that had COVID and recovered from it. Because oh, if they God. are, then they're going to be collecting their plasma and trying to put it back. There's a whole process that needs to happen, mm -hmm. has to go through trials and things like that. But if they find that, oh yeah, this, this is working, people that have recovered from it, their plasma is really valuable right now and the antibodies in their plasma, well, that's a great way to go get it. You know, I mean, yeah. you have to do the proper refrigeration and autophoresis and all that. There's a lot of yeah. things that have to happen, but that could become in in high demand soon that's a really really good point i should actually like message that company and tell them that yeah um, yeah i mean they i don't know that they've determined conclusively if the antibodies from the covid19 recovered patients are beneficial but if they are they've got a huge opportunity ahead of them yeah. interesting the you know the other thing that's also really different from a, a consumer behavior perspective in latin america specifically is a lot of people don't have computers so even still, you know, like a lot of people do shop on their phones in North America, but if you like, you know, a lot of people that are really into online shopping, like they like to have their screen, they like to scroll through things on their computer. And mm -hmm. um, then a lot of people in Latin America, there's 40% of the population is non-banked. So like they mm -hmm. don't have, a, they don't even have a bank account and they like pay everything with cash and mobile phone usage is way, way higher. Um, like yeah. Uber actually launched in Mexico before it launched in Canada, just because of the, the mobile usage, um, you know, like in, in Mexico and more people have smartphones across Latin America than they do in, in North America. Yes. Yes. So, you know, app, apps, and I always say this, if you have an app that is low cost, high volume, and it is specifically meant for mobile usage, mm -hmm. really consider Latin America because the population is here. People are really price sensitive, but also the mobile usage is here. And like, that is how people buy things here. Yeah. And it, it, it's such a good reminder, just knowing what their behavior is, um, what the community's behavior is, knowing that everybody's using on a mobile, mobile, um, 
not everybody optimizes for mobile. And if you're going to provide a service to those people, you better make sure that your mobile site is really optimized. Because I see a lot, at least in, in uh, North America and um, and, and Europe, West, Western Europe as well, where people kind of overlook how usable it is on the mobile space. So some businesses will overlook that. If your market is using their phone, you better make sure that it's very uh, user-friendly on the mobile space. Yeah. It's a really, good really good point. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. So, okay. I love, um, gosh, so much resources. Is there any other, um, any other resources that you want to provide, whether it's things that are working for you personally, um, even a habit or things that are working for your business or your client additional resources? Yeah. Okay. So I came prepared. I use the most amazing, you can't see on that side. I don't know if you heard of best self. Hmm. Best self, best self journal or like it's best self is the company. And they are all, so I love them because they use like human psychology backed research to create productivity based resources. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. I'm getting, I'm just going to put that. Uh, sorry, literally my dad is calling me. <laughs> hey, he wants to know where you're getting your groceries. Yeah. Um. <laughs> um, okay. So yeah. So the, what I love about this and I actually have used, I've used this even with my clients. So I'll give you, this is an example of a weekly overview. So you mm-hmm. can kind of see you have habits right here. You pick five habits a week, you pick three main tasks to get done that week. And then at mm-hmm. the end of the week, you reflect on happiest event that happened, your three big wins, um, review your goal that you're working towards, assess your progress and the biggest lesson you learned, Yeah. Um, which is I, what you do on a weekly. Yes. I use something very similar. Love yeah. It. And then That's this is like the daily version of it. So you have like three daily goals. You plan out your day. You have three. I love this grateful practice in the morning. Three things you're grateful for. Three mm-hmm. things you're grateful for at night. And then lessons learned and wins. So I swear by this because it's just like kind of how my brain works. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I totally hear you. I love that. I love that. I wasn't familiar with that one. So I use, I have a high performance habit planner, um, okay. high performance planner. And then I've got, um, there's a couple when Michael Hyatt has a focus planner and I've got a personal one that I use. So you are, you're speaking my language and I'll tell you that we very much encourage and or buy our clients them, um, as well. Cause we feel so strongly about them and you really do see such a shift in their productivity, in their perspective, um, those things. And we talk about that a lot at pivot me, but those things, the gratitude practice, the reflecting on your day, setting your intention of, Hey, this is the most important thing I can get done in my day they really make a difference and they're very, very relevant right now because the distraction, um, whether that's a physical distraction, like your phone being the weapon of mass distraction, or whether that's the news or even just this up here, like this, this, this noodle up here is so easy to distract us, especially right now. And so using these simple tools to, to re-anchor yourself makes a huge difference. So I, I love, I love the planner as a resource. Um, And then the other thing I would say, so there's, there's two books that I think are super important right now for different reasons. So number one, I showed you this one before atomic habits, read it. You, your life will be different in a really good way. Um, you know, tiny changes, remarkable results. I love that. And then the other one is a book by Joe Dispenza and it is called the breaking the habit of being yourself. And everybody right now is being forced to meditate pretty much all day, every day, because they're by themselves. And people have just actively been avoiding that for most of their life. That's like an extreme change on a global level. And I think this book, what I like about it is that it's very logic-based, it's science-based, and it talks about the way that your, you know, like your hormones and everything act together to make you feel the way you do. So if you're having troubles concentrating, like learn about why. And I think Really, I guess like the last thing I would, I would say is just get curious about why you are the way that you are and what that will help you do is not only cope in this environment, but freaking thrive in this environment. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I think that's kind of all I'd want to say on that. I love it. I love it. Also big, big fans of, of Joe Dispenza and James Clear um, and love Atomic Habits, one of my favorite ones too. So um, completely agree with everything you just said. And Um, you know, it's interesting because, you know, this is a time where we can kind of, uh, reflect, I mean, we're kind of forced to reflect on how we're living life, what we're doing, um, the lives that we're living, the businesses that we're running. Um, and that can be really challenging because many of us have spent a lot of time distracting ourselves from that. 
Like there's so much going on that we've been distracted from it. And um, it can be pretty jarring when you're forced to look at that when it wasn't planned. You didn't go to a personal development conference. You didn't pick up a journal to do it, uh, but yet you're having to stand there and face the mirror and go, well, this is where, this is where you're at. Um, and it, and it can be a real struggle. And these tools are ways to move through that. They're, these tools are, are ways to, to navigate that well, because um, one of our earlier calls, we talked about doing things that um, decompress us, um, which is a lot different than things that distract us. Because a lot of us are turning towards distraction, you know, like, oh, I'm just going to binge watch Netflix, or I'm just going to scroll on social media. And those, uh, and not to say that there's not a place for that, but those are really tools of distraction. Usually they don't give us decompression. And there are things that we can do that are decompressing that'll help us frame this experience in a positive way. It's still a struggle, not minimizing that, but there are these, these are, these are things that we can do today. Buying this atomic habits or, um, any of Joe Dispenza's work can help us navigate this well so that we can't do anything about this time. Like the time is going to pass. Like we're, we're in this boat together, but what we can do, um, because the time's going to pass and, and the struggle's guaranteed. Like the, there's going to be, now some people are going to struggle a little bit. Some people are going to struggle a lot, but where we have a choice is what that means. Where we have a choice is whether we actually get results out of the end of this. That, that is a choice for us, um, which is hard because it's easier to say, well, this is just happening to me. Um, there are things that are happening, but if we decide that we're going to get results out of this, if we decide that at the end of this, I'm going, I'm going to come out of it with something that I didn't have before, um, then it, it frames this experience to completely different. Like how, how we see this, there's that, that's a choice. That's something we have complete power over and, and choose to choose to see it. That something good's going to come out of this. Choose to decide that your business is going to pivot in a totally wonderful way. If you look at the trajectory of so many businesses, um, they're, before they, they take off, they have the wildly successful, their revenue jumps, um, customer satisfaction jumps. A lot of times right before that is some kind of dip. There's some kind of what seems like a pretty traumatic event that precedes that. Just know we're in that lull, like we're in that dip, but whether we we're pulled back like a slingshot and we shoot after this, that part's up to us. It's not up to our government. It's not up to the agencies. It's not even up to the virus. Like, mm -hmm we get to decide if we're going to, to frame this well, and let's, let's make that choice together. Yeah. I, you said that very eloquently. And I think that I completely agree. Yay. Woo! Of course. Cause you're an atomic habits fan. Of course we're going to see Ida on that. Um, and you use a journal. That's, that's just amazing. Yeah. I love it. Um, so let, let's do that. We'll, we've got to wrap this up. I want to be cognizant of our yeah time, which we have run over and I am now late to my next meeting, um, who happens to be watching. So Eric, thank you for, for your patience. We're all on the call. <laughs> Eric, we love you. Um, um, we'll to hop on, but, um, just two, two closing questions. One is advice for the business owners that are watching right now or, or watching afterwards or listening to the podcast. What advice would you give? What words of advice, uh, what words of advice would you leave them with? Um, ask yourself what type of person thrives going through a crisis and do everything you can to become that person. Mm. Oh, that's good. That was, and so succinct. I loved it. Okay. That's, yeah, that's just, that's what I've been trying to do. And I feel like then everything else is just executing. Uh, I'm just going to say to our podcast manager, that was our soundbite just right there. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Dana, that was good. That was beautiful. Well Thanks. said. I've got to think on that. That's really good. Um, it reminds me of the thing that's floating around Facebook right now, like choose your, choose your um, pandemic avatar. And it's like oh. a woman in sweats. And then it's a woman like in like fight gear. And yeah. I, I love it. It's just, it's kind of based off of like gaming, but yeah. um, it, it's cut. What I love about it is like, oh, you get to choose. Like it doesn't have to be sweats. It doesn't have to be pajamas all day. Like yeah. it can be like, I'm dressed up and I'm doing some things. I'm executing. Yeah. Um, Here's some high heels if you want literally it's your life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You decide, choose your avatar today. Choose your pandemic avatar today. Um, great information, great resources. Um, and a lot of, of awesome things to, uh, think about. Um, how do we support you, Dana? Like how do we show up for you or your business? How do we support you in this time? Um, honestly, I want to get, I want to help as many people coming through our boot camp that we still need to name. Um, to be honest, it's probably, I feel like the proudest of this boot camp out of anything else that we've done because it's just 
like my blood, sweat and tears from the last couple of weeks have gone into it. So um, yeah, like getting the word out about this, it's really relevant for anybody in a service-based business that speaks English is like the best way I can put it. Mm -hmm. um, so that, and then besides that, not even for me, but just um, be, be there for the people in your life. And I think that, that that helps everybody right now, including myself. So that's really all I ask. Mm, that's so good. Well, thank you so much for this. We'll, again, we'll set, put your links in um, to the website and on our, on our Facebook live feed. Thank you, Dana, for dialing in. And I hope there are many juicy mangoes in your future. We don't get a lot of that in Reno, Nevada. I miss the mangoes in Latin America. So I hope you have um, um, some amazing mangoes in your future and also that you continue to receive the generosity of it sounds like the people that are running your Airbnb and the people that are around you that are loving and supporting you. And it's also a testament to the role that you play in their life. Um, so I hope that continues and um, we'll chat again. Yes. Thank, and thank you so much for inviting me. I really, really enjoyed this conversation a lot. Yeah. Likewise.